Hello, 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 Amphrodite here, your pop culture psychic, back again with another pick a card reading. I have a huge playlist full of pick a cards, so if you want to watch a different one, you can do that too. But today we are going to do what your next love trope is. So basically how you will meet the person and how it will go. This is for the book talk girlies or anyone who's just interested in their love story. Um, and how you're going to meet, what's going to happen, is it going to be enemies to lovers, is it going to be friends to lovers, what's the tea? So I haven't done a pick a card in a while, so um, let me show you the piles, I'll show you what we're doing. So what you're going to do is essentially pick one, two, or three, and there's a timestamp down below that correlates with your reading. Um, and... This time we have um, charmed ones. So pile number one will be Piper, pile number two will be Phoebe, and pile number three will be Paige. So pick the charm one that you resonate the most with, you connect to, or whichever one you feel drawn to, and I will explain in the reading. So remember these readings are all legend for interpreters only, and if you like these, you can join the YouTube members. It's linked down below, okay? So let's get started. Okay, group number one, this is for your next love trope. How are you guys going to meet? What's it going to be? And this is for the people who picked Piper. So if you pick Piper, um, it does look like there's something super serious coming. However, Piper ends up with um, Leo, right? So she ends up with an angel. Um, and they have that sort of classic romance so there has to be some level of like classicness that gets involved here some level of um normalcy that's involved here but how we get there let's kind of see um also um it does look like the person is probably going to be very similar to leo i would think that this person will probably be more of a grounded sort of like reserve type so let's see Okay, so you, them, how you'll meet. You are not going to be interested in them at first. Because the two of wands is almost like, the two of wands is like avoidance. Uh, like, I don't want to cause problems. So I definitely think both of you are going to be a little bit scared to make a first move. And it's going to be dormant for a while in the beginning, which is funny. That's very much like Piper and Leo. Um, and the two of wands also means that like you might not hook up at first. Like it might take a while to actually like hook up or have sex or anything like that. And then the two of wands also to me is like, it's, 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 it's not super traditional how you start almost like the girl has to initiate or whatever, which again is Piper. Piper did that with Leo. So it, like, it, it kind of depends. It's almost like, it's like. The start of it is awkward and weird, and it's going to take a big moment. Um, now, they the other person on the other side of this showed up as Knight of Pentacles verse, which is about inconsistencies. So that means that this person is kind of all over the place in the beginning. Um, I don't know if they're I don't know if they're like constantly traveling, or whatever. All I can tell you is like they're a little bit all over the place, um, and I don't think I would say mixed signals as much as I would say that they're incapable of consistency. Um, there's like a lot of movement, a lot of moving parts here. And then in the between the two of them is the Queen of Pentacles here, which is really interesting because the Queen of Pentacles is about losing something. So someone has to lose something in order for you guys to connect. I don't know if it's like changing of jobs or a loss of job, or if it's a loss of another person. I mean, this does look very similar to Piper Leo and Dan, where she has to get rid of Dan for Leo. I'm not exactly sure if that's exactly how it'll be, but someone has to lose something in order for you guys to, to come together. King of Swords, Reverse, Ace of Cups, Wheel of Fortune. Yes, because it looks like we have to wait for a golden opportunity to take that leap of faith. It's like a Hail Mary. Like, it's one of those things where these two people, it's going to take a while until they finally get their shot to be together. Um, there's something that's always causing an issue for where they can't be together. King of Swords reverse. This is kind of funny how it panned out exactly how P Piper and Leo were. Um, cause King of Swords to me is almost like, um, that's like someone who's like in over their heads and doesn't have the opportunity 
but does have feelings for you. So I do feel like this person is very, 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 very protective of you, but almost like, almost like in a like older brother, older sister kind of way. I think that's why the, the sex might not come in the beginning because it seems like you're almost like, it's almost like they don't show their sex appeal. So you don't know how to take them in the beginning. You're not really able to read them. Yeah, look at that rose romance. This is one of those things where like, I think they give you gifts and do things for you and you just kind of ignore them because you're not really sure what that means. I guess you could read that as a mixed signal, but it's more like they're just inconsistent. But they're never like, they're never like turning on the charm or like flirting with you or anything to the nth degree. So you're always kind of confused, but they're always kind of there. And what's interesting is that I think eventually they're going to do something really big. Like there's a really big romantic gesture. That's the leap of faith they take. Like come, come on this trip or I'm going to buy you this thing. There's like this huge gesture, this last hurrah that'll kind of start the romance. Yep. Denial. Cause we were denying our feelings and denying our, our, our chemistry. Beauty and healing. Someone definitely has to let go of an ex in order for this to happen. I can tell you that right off the bat. Because it's like, I've always found you beautiful, but you've needed to heal. Yep. Yep. Definitely have to like, oh, an axe in order for this to happen. Seashell divination, wisdom of the shells. So that to me makes me feel like everyone kind of knows that the two of you have good chemistry, but there's always a wrench in the plans that cause it to not happen. Come on, Rumpelstiltskins. Secrets. Yeah. It's like, I've had a secret crush on you for forever. Yep. Yeah, you'll know this person for a while. New beginnings, renewal. Yep, yep. This is someone who like might be like a friend of a friend or just like chilling around you or just like, again, like older brother, older sister vibes type of energy that's been around you for a while. Could be family, friends, something like that. And this is someone who like eventually things will change like eventually this energy will grow they'll, they'll take that leap of faith but like i said i think i think it's going to take like an unconventional way to start and you might be initiating too it's hard to tell which one will move first but you will change your your direction okay so someone could be a libra involved aquarius with the 11th house um I guess Sun is Leo too, which is kind of really fucking funny because we're talking about Leo and Piper. Um, but so Sun, 11th house. I definitely think that this is someone who, I guess you considered friend zone or family zone because it's like whatever in the beginning, um, especially with the Libra. Um, Yeah, look at that. The 11th house is interesting because it's like that's friendships, groups, and organizations. But you know what's so interesting here? Libra is about someone being with someone else at first and need to let go of an ex. I think this person thinks you're really, 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 really beautiful. Like really attractive. They think you're like really, really attractive. Like... When you ask them to describe your, their type, they describe you. But they would never really like admit that. And I think they've dated people that look like you. And that's why you've always been like, I know you're obsessed with me. I know you're obsessed with me. This person definitely is somebody who wants family, in my opinion, or is family oriented. Very like classic, responsible, has like a pretty, pretty cookie cutter kind of job. I guess technically if it's Leo related, they could be in the, the medical field, but, uh, or the army because <laughs> he was in the army too, but yeah, wait, let me get you a song. Holy shit. Rina Sayama, holy till you let me go. Holy angel. I wonder if he's going to be very spiritual. I mean, I guess it could be religious, especially if you're religious. But uh, this person does seem to be someone who, I guess the the way I would describe it is like they're very much a goody two-shoes. 
like this person is a little bit of a stickler for the rules. Um, this person likes to um, sort of like obey, obey by the rules. Um, they kind of want to keep things, um, what's the word, like simple. Like this isn't like a rebellious person. This isn't someone who's like doing crazy things or saying crazy things. They're more along the lines of classic. Um, and, you know, perhaps they come from religious background but aren't religious anymore, which is kind of what that song is about. It kind of just depends there. Um, but they are a little bit more of like a classic type of person. Um, so, yeah, if you guys like that, make sure you join the YouTube members. It's linked down below. There's a ton of access to getting to exclusive readings, and you can win a reading from me, okay? So, good luck. I like how the lighting keeps adjusting. Pissing me off. <clears throat> Ooh, no, am I focused? Okay. Pile number two. This is for your next love trope. How you're going to meet them. What's it going to be like? What's the love story? Come on, book talk. So remember, if you like these, you can join the YouTube members. It's linked down below. There's a lot of exclusive content. Um, but for those of you who chose number two, this is Phoebe. Now, Phoebe has had the most lovers. So, you know, maybe you guys are going to be a little bit of a hoe. I don't know. <laughs> or have been. Uh, no. But uh, so Phoebe ends up with a Cupid. Um, she does date the source of all evil. Um, but she ends up with a Cupid. And to me, uh, the one thing that always sticks out with Phoebe's love story is that she never gave up on love and she was a hopeless romantic. Um, and she ended up with someone that lives and breathes romance so it looks like the person you end up with is going to be extremely romantic like to the point where it's kind of corny so let's look at how it goes okay so you death card reverse them page of wands upright and seven of swords huh interesting you're gonna get love bombed <laughs> screaming I'm screaming. You're getting love bombed. Because they're the page of wands, which says they're very upfront with how they feel. They're obsessed with you. 100%. And the seven of swords says that they're going to do everything they can to win you over. Seven of swords. Like, I will fight tooth and nail. I will do absolutely anything to win you over. And what's even funnier is the seven of swords is usually someone who, like, kind of is a little, like, messy or like breaks the rules for you so this is someone that's going to break the rules for you or will break a rule to be with you um this is someone that will do anything to be with you and will win you over regardless um i'm not gonna lie they are it's giving gift giving it's giving kind of like laying it on thick um the death card for you is interesting because there's a part of you that feels like it's going to be too good to be true and with the death card reverse it also tells me that um, this is someone who you kind of roll your eyes at, like you're almost like you just don't take them serious in the beginning. Let's keep going. They put a ton of effort in eight of pentacles. They are putting in a shit ton of effort. Oh, uh, Three of Swords, Reverse, and Ace of Wands. They will remind you of a past lover or look like a past lover and trigger your old trauma. And so there's a part of you that's like very hesitant. So for some of you that aren't healed, you're going to be ignoring this person and running from them in the beginning and they will be chasing you. For others you're going to have a hard time opening up your heart to them. You will give them a chance. So they won't have to chase you super hard, especially if you're mostly healed. But you are going to be super guarded in the beginning and kind of closed off to them. So I think you're going to be cold to them in the beginning. Because you're just not going to believe them. Like, this is the type of person to send you flowers at your job and you roll your eyes. Reconciliation. Oh, fuck. I think you're going to curse him out. 
him or her out. I think you're like almost like gonna like it's almost gonna like there's a break, isn't there? Fuck. Prosperity. I feel like this person has money or is very successful or works a lot. But why is there a reconciliation? Frog spirit renewal. Bluebird happiness. I think it's going to start off on the wrong foot. I think it's going to start off on the wrong foot. Something is off in the beginning. I think it's you. I think you're guarded in the beginning. I think it's you. I think you're the problem in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. Like, cause you're almost like guarded or not interested or something happens or timing is off in the beginning or you guys get into a fight and you start off on the wrong foot. I don't think it's enemies to lovers though. I don't think it's enemies to lovers. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I don't think it's enemies to lovers. I don't think it's like brat behavior. I think this is you kind of like being like, fuck you. Like you're, there's some sort of like pissing you off in the beginning and this person trying to like apologize and win you over. Yep, soul cage. Rescue, escape from captivity and restriction. I think this person, I know exactly what this person is. I know exactly what's going on. You're going to think that they're trying to own you. You're going to feel like they're trying to take over, take control. You're going to feel like they're trying to tell you what to do. They're trying. You're going to feel like they're almost like um, a power trip. Like they're used to getting whatever they want or they're used to telling people what to do and you're going to be like, fuck you. That's a good thing because this person needs that. Yep, ambition. They really like how ambitious you are. Um, and so they're they're you're like the diamond in the rough to them. Okay, we have faith and cycles. Yep. This person's not gonna give up on you, even if it looks like they do at first. They're always gonna circle back to you. I don't think that this person is toxic though. I cannot stress enough that I don't think this person is toxic. I just think that sometimes it, people need to be put in their place. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because I don't think they have bad intentions. I just think your trauma will get triggered in the beginning because I'm telling you, they're a classic romance. They want to like, they want to be that knight in shining armor. And I do think that there's a part of them that, you know, is working on their savior complex, but they really want to like take care of you and do things for you. Okay. So we have Taurus. Fourth house, Cancer, and Jupiter. Interesting. Sagittarius as well. Um, so I'm telling you right now, this person will spend money on you for sure, without a doubt. Um, they're also stubborn, so they will not give up until they get what they want. The fourth house, I think they own a home, to be honest. But regardless, the fourth house to me is like, because this person feels older, but the fourth house is like home and security. This person is like, very possessive like leo like energy super possessive um and um jupiter here again i think they have a lot going for them jupiter is luck and expansion so i feel like they're either really smart or really wealthy or something they have an abundance of something knowledge or power or money or something um um, but the Jupiter card here also tells me they want to help you. They want to do things. This is someone that would invest money into something of yours or someone that would help you get connections. Like this person, they're very, very pushy too. You know what's interesting is I see you rolling your eyes because they're, I see them as like very attractive and I see you rolling your eyes because you're just like, oh yeah, whatever. You get whatever you want because you're attractive. Like you're not, you're like not, you're just like not impressed by them. They're not impressive to you. You're very much like, wah, wah. like you don't care. Like, oh wow, you're really hot, cool, who cares? Get away from me. Like you don't care. Mood. All right, let's get you a song. Like you're just not impressed by their like looks or their money or anything like that. Like you're kind of just like bored because you don't trust them. Come on, trust issues pile. Screaming, it's the fray, how to save a life. I told you they have a savior complex. <laughs> and then Miley Cyrus fly on the wall. I think a lot of people are going to be very, very jealous of this one um, in this group. And I think a lot of people are going to try to get this person I think a lot of people are gonna to try to get this person, like they want this person. And they don't want them, they, they this person wants you. And it's almost gonna be annoying. 
you're gonna be annoyed as fuck. You're gonna be so annoyed by this person, so annoyed by this person, like you're gonna be so annoyed. Like you literally gonna be like, oh my god, these people are not gonna leave me alone. Like you're gonna be annoyed. They're a chaser, so enjoy the the thrill of the chase. Um, they're not giving up. This is your person too, by the way. You're gonna you're gonna marry this person. Now, whether or not you get divorced, that's up to you. You're gonna marry this person. Okay. So if you like that, join the YouTube members. It's linked down below. There's a lot of exclusive content. Pick a card and you can win a reading. Good luck. Okay. <coughs> I started choking, <coughs> which is definitely a sign. Looks like someone's gonna have trouble with their with honesty in this pile. So if you pick number three, this is the page pile. So um, remember, if you like these, you can join the two members. It's linked down below. There's lots of exclusive content there. Um, but the page pile to me, okay, indicates um, a romance with someone who will fight anyone or anything to have, to have, what's the word? To prove their love. That's the word. This is, um, so Paige ends up with, um, fuck, I forget his name, and I literally just watched the episode. But he's essentially a social worker, which is what she used to do. And he's a regular guy, but he, there's one episode where he has to fight uh, another prince uh, to, like, win over Paige, and that's what he wants to do. Um, and that's what he does. And he literally, like, will do anything um, to fight to be with her. So I definitely feel like there is going to have to be some sort of battle in order for you to be with this person. Um, and I do think that this person is a little bit more sensitive. Um, but let's kind of see what we got here. Okay, so you're the moon reversed. Seven of wands. Eight of wands. Oh, they have a checkered past. That's what it is. So the seven of wands is them wanting to prove themselves. I'm changed. I'm different. Eight of wands. I've changed. My life is different. Things are different. I'm not who I used to be. And the moon is reversed, which is about you uncovering the truth and uncovering their secrets. So they have a little bit of a weird past. Whether or not you've been with them before and it didn't work out, or and you try again, or um, they've just like done something a little weird or have like problems in their past. There's something in their past that is a little bit shocking. I don't think it's bad. I just think that it's shocking um, and it's not something you would normally expect. Um, it could be their upbringing or whatever, but it's almost like, oh, yes, in Italian say scustimato, like a troublemaker, um, like a bad boy, I guess you could say, or a bad girl. Ten of Pentacles reversed, Star reversed, and Seven of Cups reversed. Yep, they had a lot of negative attention in their life and they were doing things that weren't really that great for them. Um, and the Ten of Pentacles says that they paid the price for it and they had to turn their life around, Seven of Cups reverse. So I definitely think that this is giving bad boy, bad girl, for sure. But I would say that it's someone that's in a different place in their life, um, but they're not like super open about their past and the mistakes that they've made. Um, and I think you're gonna find out and it's gonna piss you off. Because I see you almost being like, what the fuck? You didn't like, you didn't tell me this. You could have told me this. Like you have this whole other life that I didn't know about. Cinnamon reignite. Yeah. Yeah. Empowerment. It's almost like they have a toxic relationship with an ex and you hear from the ex and that's what pisses you off. Because it does look like they screwed people over. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be shocked if this is some, excuse me, it's the truth. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is someone that cheated on someone in the past. Um, because it, it feels to me like this is someone that's like done things that they're not, not happy about, but they don't do it anymore. Yep, purity. Because look, this is someone who's a pure soul. So they are honest now. Transmutation. I think they took their pain and they made they made it into like a good thing. Like, I mean, it could even be someone who, like, used to be an addict and changed your life or just was, you know, grew up poor and then, like, was doing stupid shit. Or it could be someone that, like, cheated on someone and won't do that again. Like, this this is someone who's changed their life. This is someone who is 
so this is someone who could really touch the lives of other people like this would be someone who's like a good um speaker like this could be someone who volunteers this could be someone who goes and speaks on panels about how their life has changed it's giving ted talk like this is someone that's really could really this is someone that's really like turn their life around and has made something beautiful out of something bad. Yep, endurance. I'm telling you, this person, what's interesting is like, I think this is one of those things where it's gonna take a while for you to really fully trust them that they're different, but they are. So this is a long game. This is some slow moving, long game thing. Cause in the beginning, you're not gonna know about all this. And then when you find out about it, you're gonna be like, wait a minute. Fair, brown, and trembling. That's going to be you. <laughs> Screaming. Um, now, the, the gifts card here is interesting, too, because it feels like this person... Um, um, the, I, I, again, it makes me feel like an apology. Um, I think this person is very good with their words. I see like them like writing you letters or like poems or something like cringe like that. But like I see like writing. So it's like I think they're good with their words and I think that they're they're lengthy. They like like I see like a journal and them writing. Especially with this card. It's like I can explain things to you and they're very good with their words. Amaterasu, self esteem, and then we have skill. Yeah, it's almost like them being like, yeah, like I used to have low self-esteem and I was doing things that weren't great and I've, I've bettered myself. I've really, I can tell you what, this person lives every, li every day of their life like it's their last. This person put, makes every moment of their life count. This person makes everyone around them feel special. This person is very punctual, very on time, very organized. You would have no idea that this person used to have the past that they have. Um, I think that this person is almost like making penance. This person is almost like, like, like trying to make amends for all the damage that they've caused. Um, like this is someone that really, 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 this is a really good, good, good hearted person, good natured person. So we have Capricorn, sixth house, Virgo energy as well. And the moon here, cancer energy. So, um, Definitely think they take their 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 health extremely serious. Um, like I'd be shocked if this person wasn't extremely physically fit. Um, take their health very seriously. Might even have like a specific diet. Um, I also think that um, their um, their job is extremely important to them. Like their job is very impactful and very important, like a social worker, kind of funny. You have the page thing. It's almost like a social worker where they're, they're trying to change other people's lives or like a teacher who's trying to change people's lives. Like this person wants to impact people in a better way. Even if they're a personal trainer, they're still trying to better people's lives. It's giving life coach type of vibes, social work, things like that. Um, but the moon here, it's because of their own past. Um, and I do think that sometimes they have a hard time explaining it without it sounding crazy. I will also say the moon is a little bit of deception, but when it's sitting here in the sixth house, to me, that makes me feel like, um, sixth house is organization. So they're very organized. Um, but with the, when the moon is there, that makes me feel like this is the type of person that would lie to make you feel better. <laughs> so... I know a lot of times people will date people who are social workers who help other people or who are personal trainers, whatever, and then get insecure. Cause like, oh, well, I'm not super physically fit. I'm not super this, I'm not super that. This is the type of person that wouldn't bring work home with them. So this translates to kind of a good thing because if they're, if they're like in the military and they're super hard on their, um, they're like, you know, soldiers, they wouldn't do the same to you. So like, this is someone who like, with the moon here is actually a good thing because this is not someone who brings homework to you. Um, uh, what's interesting too here is that there's um, a little bit with the moon card, there's a little bit of like, um, 
I don't want to say friction, but there's a little bit of judgment for them onto you because you judge them. So it's kind of funny. I think that you yourself are going to have a lot of traits that you don't realize are not healthy. And this person will help you fix those just by being with each other. Because like this person will hold a mirror up to you with that moon because they'll be like, you're lying to yourself about this too. So it's interesting because a lot of this reading has been you like sort of like uncovering stuff about them and I see it as almost like a judgment and I see them kind of like holding a mirror and then I see a lot of your behavior patterns being mirrored with them. So I don't think that the two of you are that different. I just think that perhaps you operate um, or express them slightly differently. So it's interesting. I'm not super mad at this, to be honest. I know a lot of you are going to roll your eyes, but I, I think a little bit of healthy fighting and friction is, hel is good. Um, and it keeps the two of you going. This is the type of relationship that the two people want to better themselves and grow with each other, want to become better people together. These aren't two people that are going to live a simple life. Life. These are two people that want to challenge each other, better each other, and become the best versions of themselves. And these are two people that want to keep it real and aren't afraid to talk to each other about their demons and their dark sides. This is more of a Scorpio-like love. This is more of a, an intense like love. This isn't something that's just like simple and fairy tale. This is nitty gritty. This is I want to see your underbelly, your dark side. I want to see your evil, and I want to see your beauty. Like this person wants to see the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, as far as relationships, this relationship is absolutely one that these two people would never separate. These are people that would reincarnate again in the next life because they're obsessed with each other. Um, these two people, even if they hated each other, they could never leave each other. Um, this reminds me of the old married couple that fights until the day they die, um, but not in a bad way. But if you get mad, get mad. <clears throat> All right, let's get you a song. Yeah, Natalia kills superficial. That's the worst thing this relationship could ever have. I told you, they don't want anything superficial. Yep, Bang My Head featuring Sia, David Guetta. I'm telling you right now, no superficial allowed. This is like serious, like serious conversation, no small talk, like let's get down to nitty gritty. Like it's intense. And if it causes a little friction, that's okay because friction brings out the truth. So the, this is going to be a really interesting, re, a re, interesting relationship from bad boy to like intense self discovery. Um, definitely really like this one, um, and I think a lot of you are going to be shocked about how much you end up liking this relationship that you end up being in. So if you like that, join the YouTube members. It's linked down below. There's multiple tiers, and you get access to exclusive readings, and you can win a reading for me as well. Okay, so good luck, have fun, and forever stay forever charmed.